Unit 2, Part 1, Lesson 4, Box Plots. Box plots are graphs based on the five number summary. Here are some general pictures. A box plot can be horizontal and look like this. Or it can be vertical and look like this. Here are the positions in the box plot. This is the min. This is Q1, the first quartile. This is the median, also known as the second quartile, Q2. Q3, the maximum, unless there's an outlier. Outliers are determined by looking at the upper and lower fences. Any number larger than the upper fence or smaller than the lower fence is an outlier. Remember the formula for the upper fence is Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. And the formula for the lower fence is Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. The vertical box plot goes min, Q1, median, also known as Q2, Q3, and max. Remember to check those upper and lower fences to see if there's outliers. Here's an example for us to look at. Recall the West Nile example from the five number summary lesson. We arrived at the five number summary using the states of Texas, South Dakota, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Michigan, and Louisiana. We're going to construct a box plot for the data set below and then discuss the shape, center, and spread. So let's create a box plot. The first thing we need to do when making the box plot is check the upper and lower fences. Remember the lower fence is Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. In this case, that would be 95 minus 1.5 times 119 minus 95. This is 59. The lower fence, the upper fence, the upper fence is Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. In this case, that's 119 plus 1.5 times 119 minus 95. That is 155. Now go look at the data set. Any number that is smaller than the lower fence of 59 or any number that is bigger than the upper fence of 155 is an outlier. In this case 1013 is the outlier. Now we're ready to set up the scales for our box plot. Let's go up by 25s. I'm going to put a break in the graph and jump all the way out to catch our outlier. Remember, we're reporting West Nile cases. Since there were no numbers smaller than the lower fence, X1, the smallest ordered observation, 73, will be used Then we mark Q1, the median, which is 113, and then Q3, which is 119. Min to Q1, Q1, median, Q3. Now we need to do the part of the box plot that would come out this way. Normally, that would go to the max, which is 1013. But there's a problem. 1013 is an outlier. So instead, it gets a star, and we don't connect the box plot all the way out to that number. We draw the line out to whatever number is the next largest number. So now we look in the data set. The next largest number of 1013 is 119. But that number is also Q3. So the box plot ends right here, because the max and Q3 are the same number. This is a very special case for a box plot. 
I'm just showing it to you so you know that it can happen and that this is what occurs. So let's go ahead and try and talk about the shape. To get the shape, put a low dot on the min, put a low spot on the max, not including that outlier, and put a high dot on the median. Connect these three things together. It looks like the shape is skewed left. Remember, if the tail drops off to the left, it's skewed to the left. But there's one outlier. So we'll say skewed left with an outlier. For the center, always report the median. Here the median is a 113. And for the spread, always report the IQR. The IQR here is 119 minus 95, or 24. This would be the box plot for our example. Here are different shapes for horizontal box plots. For the first box plot, put a low spot on the min, the max, and a high spot on the median. Connect the dots, and you get a skewed left shape. Another thing that indicates that it's skewed left is that the median is closer to the upper end or you could think that the median is really far away from the left end, so it's skewed left. For the second one, low spot on the min and the max, high spot on the medium, and you get a bell shaped. For the third graph, put a low spot on the max, high spot on the median, low spot on the min, connect the shapes together and it drops off to the right. Remember that right and the R, they look the same, so it's skewed right. Another thing that could help you remember the shape is that the line in the middle is closer to the upper end, or you could think it's really far away from the right side of the graph, so it's skewed to the right. Now you know your shapes. Remember, always discuss the shape, center, spread for box plots and any extreme observations that are seen. Here are different shapes for vertical box plots. Put a low spot on the min, a low spot on the max, and a high spot on the median, and connect the shapes. Now think of rotating the graph. This number line goes from small to large as you count up. So when you're trying to decide which way to rotate, you know that number lines that move this way go from small to large. So that tells you to rotate the graph in this direction which gives a shape like this. So this is skewed to the right. Low spot on the min, low spot on the max, high spot on the median, and if you trace it out, comes out pretty bell. Or the median is about the same distance from both Q1 and Q3. It's in the center, so it's going to have more of a bell shape. Low spot on the min, low spot on the max, high spot on the median, connect the shapes, and then remember to rotate the graph this way so that you get a shape that looks something like this. So that you get a shape that looks something like this. And this graph would be skewed left because the tail drops off to the left. Yay! Now you're a box plot expert!